I've been wondering about something. Why are some pieces of art worth boatloads of money while others aren't? Who decides what art is worth? This is Pablo Picasso, one of the best known artists in the world. He was born in Spain in 1881 and died in 1973 in France. And even if you don't know anything at all about art, you have probably heard his name. This is a painting he made in 1932. It's called Le Rêve, which means the dream. And he sold it in 1941 for $7,000. It has since then been sold on a couple of times more, and in 2001, a guy bought it for an estimated $60 million. Five years later, this guy had just agreed to sell it to another guy for $139 million. He was showing the painting to his friends and telling them about the plant selling when he accidentally smashed his elbow right through it. <gasps> the guy had the painting restored at a cost of $90,000 and it was revalued at about $85 million after that. In 2013, the buyer changed his mind again and bought the painting for $155 million. What? This is Bianca Dragici, one of my favorite artists. And this is a piece she made. It's called Sing. If I was going to spend $155 million on a piece of art to put up in the living room, I would personally go for Bianca's work rather than Pablo's. So why isn't Bianca a multimillionaire? Well, value is kind of a complicated thing. Ignoring the value of art as a concept, a painting is basically a bunch of color on a flat surface, like for example a canvas. What's that worth? Let's say you're an artist living in the United States, and you just finished a beautiful painting, your best one so far. You can get a blank canvas for about $7, and a tube of decent quality oil paint is about the same. So just the materials for the painting are about $14. Let's also say that you're an artist who's actually managing to make a living as an artist. Last year, the average independent artist made an average of about 25 bucks an hour. If it took you 20 hours to finish the painting, it's now worth about $514. But, to be able to create that beautiful painting, you have practiced a lot. You have been owning your skills for about 15 years. And while you did that, you also had to pay rent, buy food and other things in order to stay alive and reasonably comfortable. Let's further assume that you're incredibly dedicated to your art, and that you've been painting for 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, and you haven't taken any vacations at all in the last 15 years. Just to make it simple, let's also assume that you made 25 bucks an hour the whole time. Adding all this to the value of the painting, it comes to $780,514. Now we're talking. But that's not $155 million. And you're probably not going to get anywhere near that much for your painting if you sell it anyway. Why? Because how much money people are willing to spend on a painting depends on other things entirely. One thing is the uniqueness of the painting. If you painted a French cafe in the afternoon, you probably wouldn't get much for it, even if you had the skill of Leonardo da Vinci and Caravaggio combined. There's a gazillion paintings on that theme, so however you did it, it's rather likely it has been done before. Painting something completely different might work better. If you want to up the price of your painting, you could try to create a good amount of buzz around yourself, kind of like Lady Gaga did, and become a famous celebrity artist. If everyone knows who you are, they will most likely pay a little bit more for your painting. On the other hand, there's always the risk that the elite art experts who deal with proper and serious art might consider you a commercial one-hit wonder kind of thing and not take you very seriously. If an art expert discovers your painting and decides that it's a very awesome piece of art, and if other art experts agree with that assessment, then your painting is suddenly an officially awesome piece of art. If you manage to become famous and popular on top of that, then people are probably going to be willing to spend a lot more money to get your painting. Because if you're an art collector, you want to have some awesome art in your collection, and to be an awesome art collector. This is very unlikely to happen though. You would have to be really, really lucky. Like win the jackpot on the lottery kind of lucky. Needless to say, most artists aren't. You could also try dying. If you create 500 excellent pieces of art before you die, then that is all there is. There will never be another piece of art by you. As time passes, some of those 500 paintings will get lost or destroyed, someone might accidentally run one over with their lawnmower, or someone's toddler might pour ketchup all over one and eat it. It will become harder and harder to get one of your paintings, and art collectors will have to fight over them, which might drive the prices up. But paintings don't necessarily become more valuable just because they're old, and in any case, it doesn't really help you since you're dead. In the end, Regardless of why they want it, it's all up to how badly someone wants your painting, and how much they're willing to pay to get it. And there's really no way to accurately predict or calculate this. Just like every other market, the art market is fluid and changes over time. Last year, 
owning a Picasso was the thing. 50 years from now, Picasso might be boring. Maybe people will pay 200 million for a genuine Dragici. That would be cool.